I want to come and worship, but I, I, you know, can you help me to take one of these? Well, hold on just a second. Let me hang on with that one. Let me hang on with that one. No, no. Just don't touch that. I'll try to worship. I'll try to worship. Thank you. Yes, I need to hold my hands. I got so much love. But I, I'll do something. Have you ever felt like that? You come to church and you got all kind of baggage you're hanging on to. Yes, come on. I, I sometimes and we've got all this baggage and it's not comfortable where we're at we've got things holding us back I've been the same way and you know I'm, I'm just like you I've had times where I've had so much luggage that one and I could probably give God that one but I just hold on to that one you understand I mean you know because there's things this is life man I'm talking life to you there are things that are hard to let go of it may be something you have longed for something you have pleaded with God about and he still has an answer, and you're struggling. I mean, you could probably let go of some hurt. You could probably let go of, of you know, maybe not get a promotion. But that thing you've longed for is hard to let go. You might can get one hand up, but this is occupying the other half. And you know, God wants everything. He wants us just to let go of the, the luggage that we got of the way that we got holding us back. I, I mean, I, listen, I, I promise you this is in no way, you know, chastising you. Because this is life. This is things we go through. We have baggage so often. We have baggage when we get up in the morning. We have baggage when we deal with family. We have baggage when we deal on, with people on our jobs. We have baggage when we come to church. When we go to the altar sometimes, when in our secret closet, now, now if everybody's truthful with me, or truthful with God, rather, it doesn't matter about me, but if you're truthful with God, sometimes you go into your prayer closet with baggage, with you stuff hope weighing you down and you're trying to release it to God, but it seems like you walk out with that thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? I know I've been through it. Even on some of our corporate prayer nights, I get down there with baggage, struggles that I have, and, and when I get up and leave, I still have the same thing. And I'm thinking, God, what use was this prayer meeting if I'm going to hold on to these things and walk out the same, the same way I came in? But I want to release it. I want to give it to God. I don't want to. I don't want to just give Him that little thing. Oh, that's simple, you know. That's simple, you know. And 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 then say, well, let me let me give Him one that I believe I can do without here. But you got that big one. <laughs> this is the Mac Daddy of them all, you know. I mean, you can shove a lot of stuff in there and keep packing, amen. You don't have to just weigh this 50 pounds to get on the airplane. This is something you just keep packing stuff in. And God says, just open the zipper, pour it out to me, and let me fix this thing up. Let me take care of this. Just release the luggage. Freed to worship. Because worship takes several forms. Not, it's not about just singing and playing music and, and worshiping to it. Okay, that, I love that. Okay, I love it. Sometimes that maybe it just melts my heart. It, it prepares me. But worship is your prayer life. Worship 
is your witness. Come on. Come on. Amen? Amen? And when I'm talking about witness, it's not how you communicate, just how you communicate with people, but it's also how you conduct yourself. Yeah. That's worship. Everything about a Christian should point to worship. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Your whole life should be about worship. Why about worship? Because there is a God in heaven that sent his son to die upon the cross, to shed his blood for you, for me, that we could be cleansed from our sins, that we could be in right standing with the God Almighty, that when Jesus comes and split those eastern skies, we will go with him. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. I'm telling you what, Thank you, I had a time making it around this church to that room. <laughs> Thank you, no, it wasn't because I'm fat. Okay? <laughs> no, really. I had a battle. Satan said, you are a fool. Come on. Oh, for God. Yeah. Oh. And all I knew was if this would help one person, I'll be a fool. But I'll help one person. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to our first passage of Scripture. In Psalms 137, verse 1 through 4. He says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, that freedom, right. that freedom where God was there, yes. we hanged our heart upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they had that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion's. And we said, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Come on. Hallelujah. Praise This should be a stranger to you. Yes, hallelujah. And not a companion. Amen. Because if this is not a stranger to you, you will hang your harps on the willow trees. And you won't be able to sing the songs of Zion. There may be words that come out, but there will be no heart in it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You know, I'm thinking that's me, Lord. You know. Sometimes I, I, I feel like I don't even know where I'm at and I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. And it feels like I've got that harp hanging on that tree when I should have it down singing the songs of Zion. Basting in his presence. Abiding in his presence. <laughs> Let me move on. You can have a seat if you like. In Psalms 81 and 6, he says, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. In other words, I relieved his shoulder from the burden that was upon his shoulders. His hands were freed from carrying the basket. There's a purpose for this tonight. Some of you have a hold of it. And you need to let go. Help us, Lord. He said in his word, I will free your shoulders from the burden. Wouldn't it be nice tonight to walk out of this place without the burden? Wouldn't it be nice tonight to walk out of this place without that struggle? Wouldn't it be nice tonight to walk out of this place without that hurt, without that confusion, without, without that battle going on, and you feel like you're free to worship again? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You feel
feel like you're free to worship again? Psalms 81 and verse 10 says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Egypt represents bondage. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. <laughs> Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Whenever God blesses you with things, it gives you an opportunity, a desire, and a passion to worship. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Even the little things. Yes. Amen. Do not overlook Amen. the little things that he does. Thank you. Because when he blesses you with the little things, they add up. We were talking about puzzles in Sunday school class this morning. And uh, Stacy said he put together puzzles that only had 23 pieces. 24, if you could find it. And they were, anyway. We were talking, I was talking, telling them about this lady that, that would put the 500 together. So I bought her a 1,000, and, and it was basically one scene like, you know, there might have been a, a little variation of color. At one point, and when I walked in and set that down, I said, here's your present. Give you something to do. She looked at it and looked at me. She was not happy. I went back later, and she wasn't finished with it, and she was, she was even worse. She was not happy with me because of that. And then Amber says, well, I'll do the 3,000. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> but the little things... It's like pieces of puzzles. If you put each one together, and one fits, one fits, another fits, and another, and it starts making that picture, and you start looking back and seeing all the little pieces that God has put into your life. And it begins to make the picture clearer and you realize that you are his child. And that he's doing everything possible to try to show you how much he loves you, how much he cares for you. And he's making that picture bigger and larger until it becomes a full picture and you see part of the plan that he has for your life. You see some of the direction that he has for you. Don't overlook the small ones. Amen. Don't overlook the small things. Yes. Amen. If someone sends you a text message, something encouraging, that's a small one right there. If someone gives you a call with something encouraging, that's a small one right there. Yes. There are bigger ones. Yes, there, there's bigger ones. But don't overlook the small ones. God's trying to help us. But if, if, if you're at the place to where you're like, you're like what this scripture was talking about, and he was talking about, you know, you hanging your harp up, but yet God came to bring you out of that place, and he came to uh, telling you to open your mouth, I'm going to bless you with something. And I want to tell you, when, when he blesses you with that, I'm going to say that i got to get on food. I, I'll try to stay there briefly. I had someone to bring a certain type of food. I'm not going to call what it was. And when, you know, I should have just had a, a little piece and went on, you know, about my business. But I had a little piece and I had another one. And then I had another one. And then I had another one. It was so good I couldn't quit. And I looked down there and it was a big piece. But now there was just a small piece left. And I said, all right, that's enough. I walked away with something in my mouth that said, 
you might as well eat the rest of it. It's so good. I did not go back and eat it, okay, until the next day. God, when God puts it in your mouth, it's like, I've got to have some more of that, God. I've, got, I've had my heart hanging up, and I haven't been singing the songs of Zion. I haven't been in your presence, but you've come to bring me out of bondage. You have put something in my mouth that makes me desire you even more, that burns deep within, that gives me a passion to worship you. To worship you. So, let me tell you something, a, a little something about bondage. You know, people, people would tell you, they said, well, just let it go. That's right. But they don't even do that. That's right. They just tell you that. That's right. See, let me tell you a little secret. It's called Christian lingo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? It's just what Christians say. They don't do it. They don't just let it go and move on. They hang on to it. Let me give you a perfect example. Have you ever heard the story about Paul and Silas? All you know about, all you think about is they sang at midnight and the chains fell off. And the angel come up and said, let's go. And they walk out free, free from bondage. But let me tell you something. They were not put in there at midnight. Come on. They didn't start singing to hours later. Okay, you got to hear this. Why? Because they were just like you and just like me. Come on. Come on. They had a hold of that bondage. They had a hold of that body, and they spent hours there. Hours. It said nothing about them witnessing to people. It said nothing about people getting saved. It said nothing about it. All it said was they were put in bondage, and they, they were in bondage. But it said, then along about midnight, Come on. amen, yeah. hours later, they realize something. We may be in bondage here. We may have all of our luggage here. Let me get to where I'm rolling. Like I do at the airport. Stay up with me. It doesn't the same thing at the airport. They might have sat there in bondage for hours. But they realize something. They have our feet and our hands in bondage. But they do not have our mouth or our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I'm curious about? I would love to know. I probably won't find out until they get to heaven and probably God say, you really worried about that? I wonder what they sang. It said along about midnight, they begin to sing. They begin to worship. They begin to worship. Hear me. They begin to worship. And then it said, all of a sudden, the bondages fell off. When they begin to worship. Help us. But they had to go through something. They had to struggle with the bondage. They didn't know how to get out of it. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have the Christian vocabulary that would get them out. They didn't have the Bible sitting in front of them to where they could go and look up a passage of Scripture. All they knew was they served a, a living God, one, one that hung on the cross, died and rose in three days, and he ascended up to heaven, and he was at the right hand of the Father, and the Scripture said, let us boldly come before the throne of grace that we may find help in time of need. That's what they done. They went before the throne of grace, and they begin to worship in the stocks 
and the chains fell off. And they were free. All you have to do is worship. All you have to do is worship. You know, it, it may not be during this service tonight. It may be when you get in your vehicle and you're riding down the road. It may be when you get home tonight. It may be in the morning. You're going to say, Lord, the pastor told me that this thing that's hanging on, I could be free of. You've done this for Paul and Silas. Now listen, if you can't carry a tune in a wet paper sack, it's all right to sing in your car by yourself. That's right. That was supposed to be funny, but it always was it was. <laughs> but you can sing to him. You can pray to him. You can worship him. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you get engulfed in that, You'll be worshiping, you'll be singing, you'll be weeping, you'll be loving him. And the next thing you know, you look around and that thing is gone. And you begin to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to give you praise and glory and honor. Just wait till I get back to church. Just wait till I walk in there. I'm going to kill that devil, the black guy, because I'm going to go and I'm going to worship. Amen. I'm going to sing songs to the one that died for me. I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to give him all the glory, all the praise, because he's worthy of it. Amen. Anybody ever seen a bird nest? One person in here seen a bird nest. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Here, let me come shake your hand, brother. You're the only one that has ever seen a bird nest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, is it all right to tell him something about a bird nest? Thank you, sir. I've watched the mother bird come in. Just as soon as she comes in, whether she has anything in her mouth or not, those birds open up, wide open. I'm thinking, y'all gonna hurt yourself, <laughs> but they're fine. They open up because they're expecting something. If you will come before the throne of grace expecting something, Amen. he'll fill you. Amen. And when he fills you, You'll worship, amen? When he fills you, you'll worship. But he's waiting on you to open up and say, fill me, Lord. Because when he fills you, you'll worship. Did y'all get that? I don't think you got it. Because when he fills you, you'll worship, amen? I said, when he fills you, you will worship. Glory to God. There will be times, you got to hear this, God just dropped it in my spirit. There will be times when you have been freed from the bondage, you've opened up God's field, you, you've been worshiping, and all of a sudden you walk by and you see that thing. The enemy's going to make sure you see it. Do you understand? And you're going to look at it. You can do one or two things. One of two things. You're not going to do them both, but you can do one of two things. You can go back to it, or you can think, boy, that was a journey, and walk on. Yeah. Amen. And walk on. Boy, that was a journey and just walk on. Amen. I choose to walk on. Amen. Because there's things that God has delivered me from. There's things God has helped me with. 
And Lord, just as soon as I testify about how God's done, what God's done for me, I walk by that thing. And I got a choice. I have a choice. And God will let me choose which one I want. I can choose to go back to it, get a hold of it, or I can walk on it. Amen? The part I hate about it is that thing's got a voice. And this, I'm not speaking in a human, physical, you know, you hear like you would somebody talking to you. But that thing calls your name. It's over here, and it's saying, Stacy, remember. Come on. John, remember. You know what you got to do? Walk on. I know this is old, <laughs> and this, this doesn't work for you to stand there. Talk to the hand and not to the face. <laughs> Send it to Jesus. Send it to Jesus because that devil is a liar. You understand what I'm saying? When you get free from it, let it go. Leave it alone. That devil's a liar. That devil's a liar. Paul and Silas, they didn't start singing right when the guards walked out. They had to figure this thing out. You know, I had this, I preached a message similar to this, but it, I, I don't really remember what all I've done and what all i said, except this one thing. There was this guy that had been in prison, and he was going to church, and he got so wrapped up in God that they went before, it was a feather, they went before his parole board, uh, uh, a uh, police chief, I sent a letter and some others, and they read the letters, they listened to the police chief, and you know what? They dismissed his parole, set him free. So I asked him one day, I said, listen, man, I said, can you bring me those handcuffs that has the little body on it you know, chains and, and a little key thing, and it also cuffs your your legs. <clears throat> and he looked at me real funny, because I knew he had pool in the police department. And he said, "Well, yeah, what you want them for, Pastor?" I said, "I've got a I've got a message I'm going to preach, and I need these for people to see and understand." And he said, okay, who are you going to use them on? And I said, brother, do you mind me doing it on you? He broke out and sweat because he remembered prison. He remembered those times he was handcuffed. And he said, pastor, I really don't care for this, but i tell you what, I'm going to do this for you. So he showed up. We started doing the message. I got him out front here. I put those handcuffs on. I put those leg cuffs on, and uh, and I started preaching away, and he's standing there like a soldier. And uh, and so at the end of it, I started searching my pockets. I said, "You got the key." He said, "Pastor, you 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 got the key. You got the key, Pastor." I I, I was doing like this, you know. Oh, here it is, brother. But if you had seen that, and I said, that's how we're in bondage sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because with these cuffs, they go all the way up, and all you can do is get your arms this high. Sometimes when we're bound, we can't get our hands up. We, they may go up, but our heart doesn't go up with it. Do you understand? It's not until... God frees you. And he promises that he will free you. Yes, amen. Tonight, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, I, I, I'm, I'm just, 
You know, I, I'm not going to say the miracle is going to happen tonight, but I'm expecting it to. Yes, amen. Anybody understand that? I'm expecting it to. Amen. I'm expecting tonight that something happens. I'm expecting some freedom tonight. Yes. Look, listen. You don't have to go home with it. It'll be hard to get out that door. These things are just awkward. Okay? I'm not a good driver of them anyway. I'll wreck in a heartbeat. And then you got to take it and get in the vehicle. And then when you get home, you got to get out there. If you go eat somewhere, listen. Okay, somebody keep a count right here. You get in your vehicle and you get out. How many times is that? Okay, you go out somewhere to eat, you get out of your vehicle, then you get in it. That's four. Okay, then you go home, you get out of your vehicle, and you go in the house. Okay, but we've missed something. We've got to add going out this door and going in the door of your house and going in the door of the restaurant. So what's that, nine? Just say you had to you had to drag this thing in and out nine times and walk with it. Walk with it. Now this is the one. This is the one that will mess you up. You'll be going along and it'll be like that right there, and you'll be dragging it upside down. This thing does can't hit a little bump, and it is just it does just like that. Amen. Amen. So what you have to do is you have to take it and you have to strap it right there. And then this one works just a little bit better. Amen. And see, all you've been doing is practicing carrying your bondage around. You said, Well, I gotta down there. Strap this bad boy here. I carry my stuff everywhere. I carry my my aches and pains, my torments, my anger, my everything. Come on now. Or <laughs> or you can park it and be free. And be free. Well, Pastor, uh, come here, come here, brother. You're going, I'm going to pretend you're the pastor. You're a little bit bigger than I am, but <laughs> sure, <I'll> pretend. <laughs> well, Pastor, you know, I, I, I can let it go. I, I've tried to. I know I should, but I bring people things that it's sin, you know. And and really, I mean, I haven't sinned or anything, you know, like like the thou shalt nots, you know. It's just a just struggle that I'm having, so I don't want them to. struggling with loose <laughs> and don't don't what? Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Why? They, they're not gonna live my life. They can't help me. Oh my. So you saying I should come up and just bring it to God and not worry about anything else. There's a scripture about that, isn't it? If we'll draw nigh 
to him he'll draw nigh to us wow that is good so all I have to do is not worry about anybody not worry about what they think and not worry about what anybody thinks or what they it, you know want to kind of draw a conclusion to I should just worry about the one that's going to say either well done or depart from me is that, that what I'm supposed to worry about? So if I got it, I shouldn't worry about anything. I should just come up and say, God, here I am. I give it to you. So is that what I'm supposed to do? So let's just do it then. If it's that simple, let's go. Come on, if you if you got something, he showed us this is that simple. We got one. Anybody else, you won't be truthful. Come on. That's it. That's all it takes. If you got some struggles, then it's just as simple as that. Just come. I'm already up here, okay? I, I, if you want me to walk back there, if you walk back up, I will. But I'm already up here with it. Anybody else, you, you just want to, don't, don't worry about anybody. Don't worry about it. Just come up here and say, Lord, I'm holding on to this thing. I'm struggling with it, but I'm turning it loose tonight, amen? I'm giving it to you tonight, Lord, amen? See, it, it's a matter if you're being truthful with God or not, Amen? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. 